morning, everybody. This is Doug Warner with New Wave Aquaria, and this morning we have the pleasure of having Terrence from Neptune Systems in our store. He's going to be in the uh, cities this weekend doing a speaking event for uh, TCMAS, our local marine aquarium society. And uh, we're going to, today we're going to talk about the Trident. So I figured uh, with all of the excitement and buzz that's going on with the Trident, what better time uh, to ask the man himself about questions that uh, we're hearing on a regular basis. So Terrence. Uh, How you doing Doug? Good, thanks for coming in. Yeah, yeah absolutely pleasure. man. So basically uh, I'm going to go over a couple of uh, general questions about the Trident and uh, get some um, commonly asked questions answered today. So I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll come up with something. So anyway Ter uh, Terrence, in your opinion, what um, do you think is um, the biggest uh, advantage that the average aquarist is going to see by implementing uh, the Trident into um, their aquarium keeping? Probably I'd say and, and you know this, the more understanding that you have of what's happening in your aquarium, the better your aquarium is going to be. And one of the things that we have to do all the time is run these little test kits. I mean, you have, you have them all over. Um, but that gives us a snapshot in time. It doesn't really give us this ongoing understanding. On top of that, we hate doing it, right? So we yeah, never do yeah. it like we're supposed to. <laughs> we're always, you know, yeah, I'll get to that next week or what have you. And then we're not really that good at it. I'm a little bit colorblind, yeah, so same. I don't know when the thing changes. And so there are three components that we know that are these reef, reef, these reef building components that are super important for us to, uh, you know, to have, you know, keep consistent in our aquarium, and that's alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. So th that was our thing, is to find a device that we could put together at a good price point that's gonna just ongoing mo monitor those things. You don't have to break open a test kit anymore and give you that information, and then there's things you can do with it. Perfect. Um, so I'm just gonna go over some of the questions we've uh, um, been asked. So. Uh, I guess the recent one that comes to mind, mm -hmm. is there any type of talk uh, to be able to implement this or is there a way currently to implement it with a calcium reactor as far as uh, with those that dose using a calcium reactor? What would your recommendation be or what's the best way to interface the two pieces? It's a good question. It's a good question. So most of the people that we will have to try it, most people use some form of, uh, you know, a balling method or dosing of two part or three part or four part, you know, kind of uh, a la Triton type of uh, dosing. Uh, methodology that is what most people do, and the and, and the, uh, the trident along with the apex allows you to do that with the dose in a very automated way, so that it automatically adds you know what's necessary or subtract what's necessary to keep you very stable. The person with the calcium reactor is in a different situation, which is for a lot of people it's always a lot of tweaking on your calcium reactor, and as the demand in your aquarium uh, you know increases, what you know what can you do? Well, you got to go tweak it a little bit, right? You always got to change either the pH level or the flow through it. So if you use already a calcium reactor with your apex, um, let's say to do uh, the pH, mm -hmm. you can use the information from the, the trident to push up or down the pH level okay. in your calcium reactor to increase or decrease the concentration of calcium carbonate in the effluent. Okay. Um, a better way, I think, um, to, to integrate the, tr the trident with a person with a calcium reactor is actually to add a dose system okay. to their system. The reason for that is you can kind of set it and forget it, like a Ronco Peel kind of thing, yeah, right, yeah, for yeah. your calcium reactor. Yep. So you set it up, it's pretty much gonna be right where you need it, and then as your tank needs a little bit more, mm -hmm. you have your dose that's gonna be backfilling calcium and, and, and alkalinity into the tank. Until it starts maybe doing a lot, then you go tweak your calcium reactor again. Okay. And with the automatic uh, dosing control, you know, with the Trident and the Apex, mm -hmm. it'll do that for you automatically. And a side benefit, just so you know too, is if you're away, you travel a lot, yes, right? Yes, yes. So it's always when you're away that that CO2 bottle oh, yeah. goes Inevitable, empty. Inevitable, yeah. It always is, and you yep. watch it tank, right? And you're just like, oh, <laughs> man. And your pH level goes to nine or whatever. Anyway, so the 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 uh, you know the best thing to have that on hand, that two part, so if you happen to be in the Maldives, yep. you can go, okay, calcium reactor's not going, but I'm gonna just pump up my calcium and, and alkalinity. Perfect. Um, so I guess that kind of transitions uh, to our next question. Um, as you had stated, the majority of people out there, um, and I know just off of our customer base, it's definitely the case, they're going to be dosing with um, a two-part system or balling method or, you know, trading. So um, can you explain a little bit more how the automation works where the uh, Triton, or the uh, Trident rather speaks to the dose and then kind of what the capabilities are through fusion mm -hmm. um, to uh, control that? Sure, absolutely. It's an excellent question. It's one we get all the time because Anytime you automate something that can effectively nuke your entire tank, yep. there's fear, and it's right. justifiable fear for the customer to go, wait a sec, this thing's gonna take control, 
and drive kind of like autopilot in your car, yeah. I'm a little bit weary of that, <laughs> yeah. okay? So, but what we've done is we've devised a way so that you come up with what the base level need is in your tank. Okay. So say it's 100 milliliters a day that you're dosing calcium and alkalinity into your tank. Um, as the trident sees that your tank demand goes up, it's going to go ahead and slowly up the amount of dosing, okay? But only up to a certain level. Sure. So it's not going to ever exceed, I think the number is like 35% by default, okay. right? So it'll never go past 135 milliliters. Yep. It'll never go below 65. So uh, for the cautious ones out there, you could, I'm guessing, uh, tweak the um, plus or minus uh, margin on it. So you if could, you want to start slower, you could do 25%. There is, there is a way to get into that information. Okay. But another thing to understand too is that you, it, it, it's not, um, it's not like a linear acceleration to get there. Sure, sure. So, because you don't want to pass your mark, right? So, yep. if you wanted, you know, eight for your DKH, mm -hmm. and it's at, you know, it's at seven point eight. Yep. You don't want to just step on the gas and try to, you know, to, to like let off the gas right when you get to eight. So, you know, it'll it'll add, you know, a considerable amount if it's really low. Right when you get an approach, let's say eight, it's going to just kind of feather that accelerator, for, and and like get you just to, to coast right in on the eight. So it's it's a lot of work went into that. No, I, I cannot imagine. That's a, a huge, huge step. So, um, and then I guess my uh, last question. I know that um, from the, the literature that comes with the Trident and um, what we've been told by Neptune, it's recommended that approximately 18 to 24 months after implementation of the Trident, it's uh, um, recommended to send it in for some some maintenance. Um, can you speak a little bit more as to you know what that may entail? I know it's still being fleshed out at this point, but um, right. just uh, I've had questions about that. So just Absolutely, and I think there's a lot of misinformation around this particular thing. Just about everything you have in the reefkeeping world requires some level of maintenance. It's Absolutely. whether or not the manufacturer is going to disclose it to you. Yes. That's the first thing, okay? So, um, you know, this is a this is literally a scientific piece of equipment, yep. and all pieces of equipment that, that that work to give you automated results on something require some level of calibration and uh, and maintenance on them. And the Trident is no different in that respect. However, it does not require you to send it in, mm -hmm. okay? That is an option we will have for people. Yep. Um, we will have a do-it-yourself kit that'll be available. And this information I have put out on the internet, the do-it-yourself kit will be less than $100. Perfect. Um, it'll be between $150 and $200 to send it in. We're going to have a, an advanced replacement option of some sort where you won't even be down, there, will be, there won't be any downtime. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's one of those things where is it 18 months, is it 24 months, is it you know, 16 months? Um, there's a lot of variability there, because, just like your car, right? Yeah. You know, your car, you open the manual, it says you need a timing belt at 70,000 miles. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go to 90,000 miles and everything's just fine, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, some people, you know, they, it's like right at 70,000, they want to get it done. Yep. So we'll, you know, we'll have that available for people and more information is forthcoming. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't see it as a, as a major deal because we're just disclosing it. This is, this is no, we do. appreciate it. I mean, uh, uh, you could never recently expect to buy any type of equipment, be it a car, be it a computer, be it anything, without doing some sort of maintenance. And 18 to 24 months is a very, very reasonable expectation. And uh, in my opinion, you guys are just looking, you know, to give the customer continued top-end performance and you know, disclosing that maintenance up front. And a lot of a lot of companies it. with different products and devices, they don't need to give you the option to send it in and have somebody else do it. They just tell you, here's a group of parts, go figure it out. Yeah. Um, and and so we're we're trying to find a way to hit both worlds. If somebody wants to do it themselves, it is a little bit complicated. You yeah. have to take the thing apart. There's risk in doing that for yeah. whenever you go do your own maintenance on your car. Yep. Or you can send it in to us, and, and we can take care of that for you. Perfect. Well, thank you uh, very much for bringing this amazing uh, piece of equipment to the hobby. It's, uh, in my opinion, and uh, I think pretty much everyone else's opinion out there, it's a complete game changer. And um, we're uh, forever in your debt for bringing that uh, to the hobby. So It's a long but, time uh, coming. A lot of people give us a lot of ribbing. You know, we've got the unicorn thing and yeah. all of that. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to see you guys have it on display here. And, and, you know, thank you guys for being such a great dealer out Absolutely. here in Minnesota. Thank you very much, Terrence. All right, take care.